Okay, so now we've created our negative mold and I'm ready to make the gelatin prosthetic. So today I'm going to use the Titanic FX um, gelatin. It comes in a couple skin tones. This one, this package has three different skin tones. I'm going to use the lighter one. Uh, actually, maybe I'll use the middle one because this is going to be a mouse nose and that has more brown tones in it. So it might help me um, to not actually have to paint it. So I think I'll use this middle tone. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is heat up the gelatin in a bowl in the microwave for about 30 seconds and stir it and see if it's melted. If it's not, you do another 30 seconds. And I'm also going to spray the surface of the negative mold and the positive mold with a, um, a vegetable oil, some kind of cooking spray. I've already coated the negative mold in a clear coat spray paint because the surface of this um, plaster that I use is kind of porous. So I sprayed this with a clear spray paint. And um, the vegetable oil acts as a mold release to help um, remove the gelatin once it's set up. Okay, so first I'm gonna heat the gelatin and then pour it into the mold and then um, we'll go from there. I heated up my gelatin so it's really hot right now. I might let it cool a little little while before I pour it in so this not doesn't seep out too much but this gelatin what it also has in it is some flocking which gives it some texture in it that makes it appear a little more like skin I like this gelatin because it has a very firm texture it's not too sticky just before I heated this one up I had tested another gelatin and it was too soft and really sticky and I, I could tell it just wasn't gonna work for a nose prosthetic so I'm going with this one instead um, you can also make your own from scratch from a powder gelatin. You just need a few ingredients. Um, those would include sorbitol, which is kind of like a sugar, um, glycerin, which is usually in soap, and then a powdered gelatin. I've even seen a recipe that adds prosade to it, which helps with its um, grip ability to the skin when you apply it. Um, there's also more homemade versions that have uh, you can make with honey. So there's a lot of versions out there. I found some online. Um, if you want to experiment with them, you can. But um, you can always buy it in a form already pre-mixed, or you can make it yourself. Okay, so now that this is, it's still pretty hot, it's starting to kind of set just a little. I'm going to spray the surface of the face and the inside of the mold with a little cooking spray. You don't need a lot. Uh, a little goes a long way. Um, and you want to make sure you kind of dab off any pools of oil. You do want to make sure it's all over the surface, even if it if the gelatin drips somewhere, you want to make sure that you have some oil so that it makes it easy to remove later. So I'm just kind of moving it around the edges. And then inside the nose, it's kind of pooled in the bottom. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of that out. As long as the surface is still kind of greasy, that's, that's how you want it. Okay. So I've got it all around. The other tricky thing with my mold is I don't have it perfectly um, flat or level, and I have to fill it up pretty, pretty far for it to um, fill up the whole prosthetic. So what I'm going to do is from, from above, I'm going to pour it in. That kind of helps with air bubbles as well. And I need to get quite a bit in here, and obviously it's going to start to pour out at some point. So I want to make sure that I get my face in there. And I'm going to slosh it around a little bit just to make sure that it's reached all the edges. And I have a, a little paper towel. I can catch some of these drips on the bottom. That's why I have a towel. Okay, so it seems like it's actually fit all the way in the prosthetic piece, which is great. And I just have to let it set now. So it's got to cool, and um, I have to be able to um, touch it with my hand without it feeling sticky or wet. So you can test for when your gelatin is set up by looking at any extra material you might have. When that sets up, then you know you can um, demold. So what I'm going to do is take a firm grip of the 
face here and I'm going to hold tight to the negative mold at the top and pull out. There you go. It comes out pretty easy. There's a few, you, you can see on the inside, there's a few kind of wrinkles and spots that had air bubbles. It might be okay, I can't tell right now. Um, so I think the best move is to take the gelatin out and see what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do is take some powder, I have this colorless powder, I'm gonna powder the surface. And it's gonna get rid of the stickiness of the gelatin. That'll make it a little easier to get this out of the mold. And then you wanna find a good edge that you feel like you can kind of pull, pull this gelatin out. I'm gonna start at the bottom where it kind of spills out. And I wanna start by powdering the underside as well. And this piece just broke away. You can see it's just peeling right off. That's right where the cutting, the cutting edge is on the mold, which is okay. That's that's kind of where we want the gelatin to come apart the most. But it makes it a little tricky to get a nice edge when I'm peeling it out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to work a little section off without getting the mold under. And if I powder as I go, then that should give me a nice edge on the gelatin. So I'm just gonna try to very delicately peel it off with my brush underneath. And you can use your brush to kind of get to the edge of that aesthetic piece. You want it to be as thin as possible. It's not always the easiest thing. I'm just going to very carefully work all the way around. And all of this excess can be saved and I can reheat it and use it again. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's completely recyclable. So I'm just going to save it. And I usually use a powder brush, but this brush seemed to be good because it was flat. I thought I could kind of work underneath the gelatin, and it seems to be doing a pretty good job. And now this side is where there's some of the air bubbles where it makes the, the prosthetic piece a little thinner. So I want to be careful to not create a rip. Almost have it out. There you go. So, you know, how, yeah, you can see that pretty well. So, this is the mouse nose. You know, it, it's got fairly good edges. It has a few holes here and there, but I think for the makeup look that I'm going to do, I'm just going to work with the holes as they are. So I'm not going to redo it, even though it could probably use to be redone one more time. And voila, now you can um, apply it and do your makeup look.